So, so the EPA says, well, as radon concentrations go up, lung cancer rates go up. And you go, yeah, when you're, when you're here, and we're going to find out where, here, where, where this is in a minute, this is going to astonish you. They're going to go, well, right in here, right here, it's linear. We can, I mean, it doesn't matter which curve you use, we can show you that it's linear. We're going, yeah, but guys, these are mines. These are houses. There's a difference. So, what does the government really, really say? Okay, we've got this nut up here, Cleveland Connell, what the hell does he know? What does the government say about this? Let's go to the US Department of Energy, who were the ones who conducted the radon tests and the radon epidemiology. Here's what they said. They said, despite, and this is a quote, despite being widely accepted as a guideline in setting standards for protecting public health, the linearity hypothesis is not firmly established as an expression of scientific knowledge. That is, the DOE says that the model being used by the EPA is not science. That's what the DOE says. A guy by the name of Bernie Cohen with the University of Pittsburgh, he's professor of toxicology, he did one of the largest radon studies conducted in the United States. I actually saw him present this paper. This was back in the 80s. And it was amazing. He's up at the podium. He's giving the talk. And a guy from the EPA jumped up, grabbed somebody's paper, started rolling up balls, and were throwing them at Bernie, going, we never authorized you to say that. We never authorized He's rolling up this poor guy's paper. He's throwing them at Bernie Cohen when he was presenting this paper. What Bernie did was he conducted one of the largest radon studies in the country. I think there were about 435 counties involved. And what he found was exactly what other organizations were finding was that, that the peer, this is called beer right here, this is the biological effects of ionizing radiation committee number six. So we have beer four and beer six predictions. They're saying as radon goes up, we would anticipate the cancer rate to go up. Bernie looked at the actual cancer rates across the country and he found exactly the opposite. He found that as, as radon concentrations go up, lung cancer rates were decreasing. And, and for the most part, with the exception of these two, which are kind of flat lines, for the most part, the decrease was up to 10 standard deviations off the prediction. So in other words, these weren't just like minor little statistical hiccups. These were way off. As radon was going up, lung cancer rates are going down. And, and again, Bernie said, rats don't lie. Here we go. He was testing the no the, the linear no threshold dose response relationship that the EPA was using. And he concluded, as did every other epidemiological society that looked at it, that it's fantasy. It is complete bogus. And, and even the EPA, if you read their documents, in there they will tell you, it is nonsense. We'll get into that in a minute. So, what does the government really say? Here is the information taken directly from the US EPA Risk Estimate Methodology Environmental Impact Statement for NESHAPS, National Emission Standards for Hazardous Air Pollutants, for radionuclides. This is like a 200-page book that reads like stereo instructions. It is miserable to get through, and, 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 it's, and it's poorly written to boot. But it is, it, it, it is just, it, it is uh, very difficult to read through. So nobody in their right mind would read this on purpose unless they're toxicologists. But in there, here's what they say. The EPA says, exposure in the U.S. cohort is poorly known. In other words, information on all of you that live in houses, poorly known. Cumulative working level months, don't worry about that, it's just a, a cert, it's a, a, an expression of dose. Cumulative working uh, level months are calculated from measured radon levels for only 10% of the miners. They used miner data. I told you that, showed you that curve and I said up here, that's all in mines. I wasn't joking. Those are miners that they were studying. So in their model, they had measured radon concentrations for only 10% of their cohort. They go on then to say, and guesswork is used for about 53% of their study group. Guesswork. Guesswork. Okay. What's your name? Kate. Kate. How long is that table? Six, 
and a half feet. Six and a half feet. Is that a guess? No, that's an estimate. She looked at it. She said, I'm about so high if I lay out on there, or my arms are this long, and I'll, so it's about six and a half feet. Okay, now, Kate, how long is the table in my office? Six feet? Nope, I don't have one. No. That's a guess. Okay, that's guesswork. If I'm estimating doses, that's different. I'm looking at empirical data, I'm coming up with something reasonable. A guess is where you have no freaking idea. Nothing. That's not science. And yet, this four pica curie per liter standard that the EPA is coming up, their own words are, they used guesswork for over half of their study population. Let me tell you why they used guesswork. Because they had an a priori model. And they said, this is what the model looks like. And now let's plot out the deaths and the exposures and the dots were all over the place and they didn't fit the line. So how do you fix the problem? You change the person's exposure until it fits the line. You start applying to people doses so that now those doses fit the line that you've made an a priori statement that that is your model. Now see, in real science, what we do is we use the data to develop a model. The EPA developed a model, and then they adjusted all the data so it fit the model. That's not science. Guesswork. That's the EPA's quote, not mine. Let's take a look at the U.S. Department of Energy. This is what the government really says, not these little pamphlets that you get. Here's what the government really says. This is out of Radon, Radon Research Program, 1989. People say, oh, well, that's an old study. Well, <laughs> yeah, go, go get a... A, a math book from the 1600s. Tell me what's really different. Okay, it's the same thing here. Biological statements, biological. Radiation is still radiation. And by the way, this is still the document the EPA is using. Okay, so 1989 doesn't matter. Some people say, well, that's old. Well, then if it's old, why is the EPA still using it? Why are they still saying that that is the document of choice? So let's see what they have to say. This is directly out of the radon research program. Currently, there is very little information about the health effects associated with exposures to radon at levels believed to be commonly encountered by the public. Let's, let's read that one more time. Currently, this is the EPA. Currently, there is very little information about the health effects associated with exposures to radon at levels believed to be commonly encountered by the public. Now, does that sound like the EPA is really confident that residential radon concentrations cause cancer? They're telling you right in their documents, they haven't got a freaking clue. They have no data. Very little information. Then they go on to say, the only human data available for predicting the risks to the public are studies examining the health effects of exposure to radon and its progeny in underground miners. And you go, what? Why? Why don't you, you got a whole freaking nation, millions of houses with millions of people in there, why don't you look at that? You've got all this data out there, you have death records, you have live births, you have spatial data on millions and millions of houses. Why do you say that the only data is available is underground miners? Well, the answer is because if they don't use the, the, the data from the underground miners, the model doesn't work because people aren't dying. Therefore, but they have to qualify it. Okay, here's what the EPA says about their model. This is not me, this is the EPA. This information would be appropriate for predicting the risks to the public if everyone was a miner, everyone lived in mines, and a large fraction of the general population smoked cigarettes. That is how they justify their four pica curies per liter. They say, well, yeah, we told you in our documentation, we qualified the four pica curies per liter. We said, our model is valid if, Katie, if you live in a mine, if you're a miner and you smoke cigarettes. It's not our fault you don't live in a mine. Our model is still good if you're a miner. Okay, now does it say that anywhere in the EPA pamphlet? No. Nowhere. No. But they'll refer you back to this 200 page document and say, see, we were honest. 
We told you, we told you that, that the four pi carry per liter is extrapolated from a linear dose response relationship that isn't science. And we guessed what those exposures were in more than half of the study population. And you have to be a miner and live in a mine, otherwise it doesn't count. Okay, that's what the EPA says. They're being honest. What does the government really tell us? Here's from the US EPA risk assessment. It says, however, exposure conditions in homes differ from those in mines. I mean, you almost have, I mean, do you have to be working for the government to come up with something like that and not, I mean, how do you say that without smiling? You know, of course it's different. A mining condition is very different from a house with respect to both the physical properties of the inhaled radon decay products and the patterns between the two environments. But they used it anyway. They come out and they say it's completely different. So we're going to use it. Here's what our government really says about radon. This is from the US EPA assessment of risks from radon, 2003. Although there's a growing body of data from epidemiological studies showing a correlation between lung cancer and radon exposure, so let's stop. What was the correlation that was shown? It was minus. It was going down. Did they lie? No. The EPA said, studies are showing a correlation between lung cancer rates and radon. Is it true? Yes. It's a broad mental reservation. They're telling you there's a correlation. What they're not telling you, it's a negative correlation. They know that by saying there's a correlation between radon and lung cancer, what you're hearing is there's causation. One goes up, the other goes up. They haven't lied. Uh, the, however, these results do not conclusively demonstrate an excessive risk in homes with elevated radon. Well, of course they don't. They're going down. <laughs> okay, if they're going down, they can't show an elevated risk. And yet, even this statement on its own, on a stand alone, the EPA is telling you their own studies, quote, results do not conclusively demonstrate an excess risk in homes with elevated radon. Does that sound even remotely close to what they're putting out in those pamphlets? No. They're saying, oh, we expect this many deaths from this kind of radon. It's just not true. Even their own studies aren't showing that. Their own studies are showing exactly the opposite. Thus, estimates of risk for indoor exposures still must be extrapolated from using models derived from the minor data. Why? Because if they don't use the minor data, their whole argument falls apart. When they actually do epidemiological studies showing radon concentrations in houses and lung cancer rates, they're finding the same thing Bernie Cohen found out of the University of Pittsburgh, which is radon goes up, lung cancer rates go down. It's just that simple. Now here's what we need to do. We need to be forward thinking. We need to put together a company 15 years from now that's gonna go in and remove all the radon mitigation <laughs> systems out of houses. We are ahead of the curve. All right, we're going to make money off of this because it, it's all market driven anyway. Okay, it's just all market driven. So anyway, so that, this is what happens when they use actual data from houses. They find that lung cancer rates go down. Now here's what the EPA said about Bernie. They said numerous critics, including the Beer, uh, Beer 6 Committee, which is Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation, numerous critics including the Beer 6 Committee, who came up with the linear dose response relationship, have discounted the ecological studies of Bernie Cohen because of methodological limitations and the biologically based models remain highly speculative. Now this is the organization that said that they used guesswork, but Bernie's stuff is, is speculative? They're guessing, but that's okay. Bernie uses hard data, but he's speculative? The Beer 6 Committee adopted the linear no threshold assumption based on our current understanding of the mechanisms of radon induced lung cancer, which is just an outright lie. It is not what the mechanisms are believed to be. But we recognize that the understanding is incomplete, and therefore, the evidence for this assumption is not conclusive. My gosh, there are more wiggle words in this document than in a used car contract. There are just so many qualifiers that it is, it is very difficult to even express this with a straight face. If you or I did this sort of stuff, we'd probably be in prison. Okay, so they're saying that Bernie's stuff was speculative, but 50% of their work is, is guesswork. Okay, so 
Now, have I thoroughly scared you about radon? Do you think I measured radon in my house? Being a radiation safety officer for 16 years? No, not once, not once. Should you be scared? Approximately 82% of your radiation dose is gonna come from norms, naturally occurring radioactive materials. Okay, so let's ask a question. Why are we here? Why, why, is, why is there this whole big palaver anyway? This will help to explain the why. In 1991, the Society for Nuclear Medicine Committee on Radiological Effects of Ionizing Radiation estimated that the cost, and mitigation, cost of testing and mitigation at the EPA level of four picocuries per liter in 1991 alone was $44 billion. In 1991, $44 billion. Now, if you are the chairman of the let's test a house for radon uh, industry, and you got $44 billion at your disposal, well, not at your disposal, but that's, that's the size of your industry, do you think that might have a little weight? If you are the EPA trying to meet budget, and Chris, she's a former grant writer, she'll tell you, I, I, I've got 15,000 employees working on the radon program alone. I need to make payroll. I'm gonna have her go to Congress and tell Congress, oh, there's all this uncertainty about, we just don't know. We know that there's a correlation. We need more money so I can make payroll with these 15,000 employees in the radon program. There, there are members of the government whose entire career will begin and end in the radon program. And it's all hinged on trying to sell the uncertainty in 1991, it was estimated that uh, if you lowered it to the two picocuries per liter in 1991 dollars, it would go to a $101 billion industry. And even at the NCRP level of eight picocuries per liter, it's still $15 billion. And that's in 1991. Those are 1991 dollars. That's the why. That's why we're here. It is big business. It doesn't seem that way. I don't know. How much does a radon cost? Does a radon test cost? How, how much? I don't know. About 100 bucks, okay. So it doesn't sound like much, but it's big, big business. And mitigation, that's where all the money's at, right? right? And mitigation as well, yeah. All right, so how dangerous is radon? Well, let's go and let's ask the ex experts. So where do you go these days if you want to find out the real story? Google. You Google it. <laughs> so let's, let's go to Google and let's find out how dangerous is radiation. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh-huh, mutants. You got a little Dutch hound there and he's turning into a spider, probably too close to Chernobyl, okay? So yeah, we, mut by the way, mutants, um, when we talk about mutagenic events, this would not be mutant, if, if this was even real, that wouldn't be a mutant, that's a teratogen, monster maker, a teratogen. Radiation is a mutagen, not a teratogen, meaning that when the, when the alpha particle breaks a double strand of the DNA, and now, if the repair doesn't take place, you have a mutant cell. The mutant cell, all it means is that it now has lost the information it needs to do its job. Okay, that is a mutant. That is a teratogen. A mutagen, a mutagenic event, never ends up in a, that's called a genotypic change. That's a phenotypic change. So a, a, a radiation causes a mutation in the cell and it ends there, it's somatic. It ends with that cell or that cell line. Maybe it'll start to reproduce as a tumor, benign or, or, or malignant, either one. But it's still within that cell line. A phenotypic change, on the other hand, that is what's known as a teratogen, a monster maker. Radiation is not a teratogen. That's where we get all of our information from how dangerous is radon. Godzilla. <laughs> that, is, that is where we know everything we need to know about mutants. Oh, and this guy. Yeah, this is probably from Chernobyl. Uh, a gerbil escaped, mated with a lion, and there we've got a problem. These things are wandering the woods now around Chernobyl, apparently. Here's a mutant. 
<laughs> yes, I did do that. <laughs> this is me undercover, too close to radiation for 16 years. Yeah, yeah, too close to radiation. So what happens though is this speaks to the issue of perceived risk. How easy is it to frighten people with radiation? And that is what sells in this industry. Is those EPA pamphlets that talk about what your cancer rate is, you're going to die from cancer if you've got radon in your house. Okay, This brings into a wonderful equation. It's, uh, it's called the Peter Salmon equation. Peter Salmon is a tremendous risk communicator. And what he said was, risk is not is not what those mathematical models are. Rather, for the person on the street, risk is hazard plus outrage. It is the emotional side. It is risk becomes what you can present it as. And you usually can, you can't change the hazard. But boy, you can sure change the outrage. You can frighten people. You can make them suspicious. If they, are, if they have no control over the situation, outrage goes up. If it's exotic, and we're going to get into that, mold, mold issues, oh, Stachybotrys hatra. Gosh, the name is scary, okay? We're going to talk about that during our mold discussion in a couple of weeks. So this is what's driving the industry, is the outrage. Because the hazard is not resulting in any real significant risk. When we look at the actual concentrations of radon in homes across the country, using real methods for measuring radon, what we find is that only 2.5% of the houses were above 8 picocuries per liter. Now remember, even at 8, we have no evidence whatsoever that um, cancer rates increase. In fact, we know they're going down. And yet, only 2.5% of the houses were above 8%. The EPA served 11,000 homes. They found that only 6% of the houses are at four or above picocuries per liter. So 94% of the houses are below that. Well, talk about guesswork. Uh, let's see here, somebody phones me up and says, hi, listen, um, I need a radon test in my house. Where are you located? Uh, 123 Main Street, Louisville, Colorado. Oh, it's below four. Well, how do you know that? I'm a statistician. <laughs> you want to put money on it? It's a good bet. I have a 94% chance of being correct. He's got a 6% chance of losing his money, or I, of, of, of winning his money. Okay, I have a 94% chance. A, a study came out in the late 80s and it showed that if you take a geology student and you give them a zip code, they can guess a radon concentration for that zip code with better accuracy than the radon monitors the radon guys are using. Oops. I think that's right. Let me see here. Yeah, well, I just push a different button, same effect. I'll have to study that. Maybe you can get me a grant. <laughs> <laughs> testing. Okay, so here we go into testing, residential radon. There is not a single radon monitor on the market today being used in the residential mo uh, market that actually measures radon. Not one. Not one, not one, not one. Not one. And you, you could say, well, what about the... Nope, doesn't... Well, what about the electret such as, nope, it doesn't. None of them. Not one of the radon monitors being used by the radon guys in the residential market measure radon. Not a single one. Many of them are measuring, they're called electrets. Many, many of them are measuring the, uh, it's, it's, a, it's kind of complicated. They're, some of them are measuring bismuth to some extent, but not one is actually measuring radon. Number two. The picocurie per liter unit used in those reports is not a real picocurie per liter. It's an EPA picocurie per liter. So if, uh, if I go into a mine, and, and this is uh, something that actually happened. I was involved in a case in New Mexico. Uh, it was a mine. They were under uh, investigation by MSHA for violations. MSHA said, you need to come in here. You need to do your exposure monitoring for these employees. So they went through the phone book or something like that. And they found a guy who was a radon expert. So he went and he put all these goofy little radon devices through the mine. And then he reported, oh, here's what your radon concentrations are. And, and MSHA came out and they went, that's funny. We don't have a sense of humor. Here's your fine. 
because you went and you hired a residential radon guy to measure radon? They don't know anything about radon. Those goofy little devices, they don't measure radon. So what happened was is, and there was, they, this guy put out like hundreds of these things. So the mine went back to the radon guy and they said, here's the deal. We won't see you in jail or sue you out of business, but you give us all of our money back and you eat that entire cost. And next time somebody needs a radon expert, you need to send them to like an industrial hygienist or somebody who actually does human exposures and just stick to measuring radon in houses where those numbers don't matter and they are entirely uninterpretable by anybody. And so MSHA gave them the chance to redo real monitoring um, within 90 days. Because these radon guys, they don't know anything about radon. They don't know anything about radiation or human exposures or risk. They don't even know that their device isn't even measuring radon. Sampling error is huge. It's been estimated that the sampling error is plus or minus 90%. The analytical error is about 12%. But the sampling error is plus or minus 90%. Now what does that mean? What that means, and this is taken from an actual study done for the EPA. The reason being is that almost everything can affect those, those readings. Cycling air conditioner, a cycling forced air furnace, barometric pressure fluctuate, fluctuations, the weather, um, differences in indoor to outdoor temperatures will drastically change those radon um, monitors. Uh, external doors in the structure open or close. Internal doors opening and closing will change the data. Macro particle changes. If you have two identical houses, and I mean like they are completely identical, even, the, even identical twins live in them, one's on a dirt road and one's in the city, the one on the dirt road will always have the lower radon concentration based on those radon monitors those guys are doing. Because they're not measuring radon. And dust particles change their readings drastically. Phases of the moon will change the data. Now, I'm not joking. Recent rains, relative humidity, snow cover, soil porosity, solar loading on the structure. If you have a house and you measure it for, for um, three days and right next to it you have another house, identical in every way, the sun is shining on this one, but not on that one, radon different, the radon results are completely different based on solar loading alone. Time of day, time of year, ultrafine particle loading. You want to cheat a radon, one of these radon uh, tests? Don't open the windows. <laughs> That's going to make them go up. Light a candle in there. <laughs> nice scented candle. And make it a Yankee candle, the worst kind. <laughs> right? Light a, yan a jar candle, a Yankee candle in there. Uh, I almost guarantee you, depending on what kind of method they're using, you're going to pass that radon test. <laughs> Water table levels, wind direction, oh my gosh, you name it, it can change the data. Now to put that into perspective, let's say we had a house, and this is what those, that 90% means. Let's say we had a house that literally had a genuine radon concentration of 47 picocuries per liter, okay? <clears throat> so that was the result. So let's see, at 47. Now we hire 20 radon guys to go in, and those 20 guys get their data, and they come back with results as low as, I thought it was as low as two, as low as three, and as high as uh, 91 picocuries per liter. Because of the method they're using, there is no statistically significant difference between three picocuries per liter and 90 picocuries per liter. They are both within the confidence intervals stated by the manufacturer. Okay. So when I hear people say, oh, I had a radon test. It came back in at 4.2. That's like going to your doctor and he says, how much do you weigh? I weigh 200.97862 pounds. <laughs> well, no, you, no, you don't. My gosh, if you pee, you just change that number. Okay. <laughs> you, can't have, you can't have those units of precision when, when, when you can't even figure out, if, do you have 10, do you have 20, do you have 30, do you have 2? You don't know. You don't even know that. Never mind something 0.5. It's a completely meaningless number. Because if it comes back at 4.5, the real number might be 30 or it might be 0 0.01. So the 0.5 thing, where does that come from? <clears throat> Are you scared yet? Are you going to run out and worry about your radon? Here's what the real experts have to say, and I'm, I'm going to conclude here really quickly. 
The study of radiation and radiation effects is called health physics. Uh, and health physicist is somebody who focuses just on radiation toxicology and radiation epidemiology. According to the Health Physics Society, and this came out of the University of Michigan, they say the following. Radiogenic health effects, primarily cancer, are observed in humans only at doses in excess of 10 rems, delivered at high rates, so about, about 100 picocuries.